A deeper dive into the Washington Commanders season opening win over the Jacksonville Jaguars, including thoughts from Commanders fans, some of you calling in after the game. And we're going to hear from a couple of Commanders players themselves. All of that coming up right now on the Locked On Commanders podcast. Your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome in, Commanders fans, to the Locked On Commanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders, free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and the WUSA 9 Plus app, your CBS affiliate app in the DMV that is a game changer for local news and sports. Just download WSA 9 Plus for your Roku or Amazon Fire TV stick. No matter how you're joining us today, we thank you for making us your first listen or your first view every single day. I'm David Harrison writer for Commander's Country, a part of Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, covering your commanders and writing over there. My co-host is Chris Russell, one half of the Russell and Medhurst show on the Team 980, which you can catch live Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to noon Eastern or anytime, along with this show on the Odyssey app. Chris, we've got news and we've got more notes as we dive deeper into the Washington Commanders Week 1 win. Let's get it started. Yeah, absolutely. But first, we tell you that today's episode of Locked On Commanders, David, is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players. If they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, guess what? You can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com and promo code locked on. We told you about them after the game on Sunday. And of course, we have lots of football. It is more than officially back. But the big news uh, on this episode as we record this is, David, we found out on Monday afternoon what we kind of feared, although maybe slightly different than I think what Probably some people had guessed, and that's rookie defensive tackle. Fedarian Mathis Mm -hmm. is reportedly lost for the year. Ian Rappaport first to report this. Ron Rivera didn't tell you guys uh, in the daily media at 1030 on Monday morning anything other than Fedarian Mathis had gone in for an MRI and that they didn't have results. But we found out through Rappaport of NFL Network uh, that the second round rookie from Alabama, uh, again, apparently had his ACL spared, but uh, MCL uh, uh, meniscus, I should say, damage and surgery required that will or is expected to keep him out uh, for the entire year. First, your reaction to that before we get into who could pot- potentially replace Fedarian Mathis. Yeah, I mean, your heart breaks, you know, for the kid, for Fedarian, you know, young man looking to come in, make an impact for his team, get his career started. You know, this 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 team is no stranger to Alabama defensive linemen and Alabama contributors you know, uh, uh, just, just in general. So Fedarian was a guy that, you know, look, they, they had some plans for, you know what I mean? There were some things that we saw during training camp and in some of the preseason practices uh, that, you know, kind of like what we saw week one against the Jacksonville Jaguars offensively, we were looking forward to seeing those things on the playing field uh, against live opponents. And now some of those things you're still going to see, but some of those things, honestly, I'm not sure how you pull them off without Fedarian uh, on the field. He's just that he just kind of presents the right type of skill set for that. So you feel bad for him. Obviously, kind of limits what the defense can do. Uh, just from some of the some of the avenues, can't not saying it's going to torpedo the defense by any means necessarily. Just with one guy, there's a lot of talent still left on that side of the ball, obviously. But it does kind of minimize a little bit of what they were going to try to do, what we expected them uh, to be able to do. But first and foremost, you just hope now the next step is that Fedarian surgery goes well, that the healing process can begin, and then you know this time next year, hopefully, we're celebrating. Uh, the return of Fedaria Mathis to join his teammates, and then obviously some new names that'll be around as well to see this defense take even another step forward from what they do this year. Yeah, and obviously they're going to be searching the waiver wire, the veteran wire, uh, veteran free agency here, and maybe by the time you all see this or some of you see this, they'll have a new name in the fold. But before we get there, I just wanted to talk about the impact. You know, this is a huge impact, I think, because remember, they lost Matt Ioannidis. Uh, They let him go in a salary cap move. 
They let Tim Settle go via free agency to the Buffalo Bills, so they were already reworked at that position. Uh, then on top of that, you lose Mathis, and really right now, as of Monday afternoon, all you really have in terms of a natural interior defensive tackle is Daniel Wise, who is more than capable of being that third rotational tackle, but clearly that's not enough depth, and, and the problem is a little bit further complicated by the fact that James Smith-Williams could move inside, right? But aha, he's required to play more outside because Chase Young is out for at least the next three games and possibly more. And he plays in a rotation at the right defensive end spot with Casey Tuhill, Shaka Tony, so on and so forth. F.A. Obata could play a little bit inside, but he's a little bit, I think, you know, maybe can get pinned around a little bit. This team already struggled mightily to stop the run. So I would expect a veteran street free agent. And that brings us to this portion of our opening segment here is, and again, maybe the answer, depending on what time you're viewing this, listening to this could already be solved. But as far as we know, look, star Latou Lale played with Ron in Carolina. He doesn't have any connections to Jeff Scanina or Ryan Kerrigan or Jack Del Rio, but he played for Ron in Carolina, 33 years old, productive player, a lot of wear and tear, a lot of injuries, but still a rotational piece. Or Linval Joseph, who played in the division once with the New York Giants, played most recently with the Chargers, also 33. Or David, a guy that you covered down in Tampa, and Dominican Sue, who I know played more outside than in mm -hmm. in Tampa because of Vita Vea, but could still, at, I think, play a little bit of an inside rotational role as well because of the size of his frame. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, your three, four ends, you know what I mean? Traditionally can be moved inside to be four, three D tackles and, you know, vice versa. Your three, four D tackles could, th in theory, or your four, three D tackles could, in theory, potentially be kicked out to play three, four defensive ends. Like Deron Payne would probably be pretty okay as a three, four defensive end uh, if, he, if he were to go into a system like that. Um, so Indomit can suit, you know, certainly a guy, he's he's played inside in a four, three. He's played on the edge in a three, four, which gives you scheme versatility. So if Washington wants to come out with a three man, three down lineman, uh, type of look. Maybe you put Indomitian at the at the nose. You kind of have a smaller, kind of a faster package uh, as well. So Indomitian would be a great addition. He does have talent left, obviously, still in the bank. He's he's healthy. He wants to play. I'm honestly very surprised that he hasn't been signed yet. So I don't know what's going on with that whole situation. But I will tell you with Indomitian too, he's not a guy that has to play. Like he's very he's very set off the field. Uh, so maybe he's just waiting for the right situation, which sometimes refers to money. Um, but good leader, good team player. Don't let any rumors or conspiracies about he's an evil, dirty type of guy or a locker room divider. He's not any of those things. He is a very good teammate and would would do well for this team. But I honestly wonder. I mean, look, David Bada is on the practice squad. You know what I mean? He's not as big, obviously. His his he's you know he's at the same I guess framework, but he's not. He just his his size. He's about 15 pounds lighter than Fedaria Mathis. But this is something Chris that we talked about during the preseason, like with with Big Phil in there, like. There's just not really a one for one. Like if you don't have Fedaria Mathis, and I remember when he walked off the practice field with a limp uh, on his left foot or left leg. I mean, it turned out to be nothing really. But I remember when he walked off the field, literally, we were all talking about. I was like, "There's really no Fedaria Mathis replacement on this roster." Now you're talking about you can plug guys in there, but they're still not going to give you the same thing. Uh, K1 Short, former Carolina Panther, is a name that also has been bouncing around with some people. He hasn't played since 2020, so there's probably a reason for that. But yeah, we'll see what the Washington Commanders do. I mean, they could go after a big guy, Linval Joseph, like you said, and Dominic and Sue, uh, to be kind of like a one-to-one -one body type type of fill-in. Or they could look to the roster that they know, bring David Botta up from the practice squad, uh, fill him in, or they could surprise us all and go a completely different direction that we're not even thinking of. Something to keep in mind right here on the Locked On Commanders podcast. Again, if you think of all these connections, Two and two sometimes does <laughs> equal four. All right. Uh, so we discussed that. Obviously, we'll see what happens. Coming up on the Locked On Commanders podcast, did FedEx Field actually provide a home field advantage on Sunday? David and I were there. Uh, and we will discuss and hopefully solicit your voicemails for later on during the week. Speaking of voicemails, we have those coming up. But first, I want to tell you guys about our friends at Prize Pick. Super easy. Pick two uh, between two and five players. If they score more or less than their Prize Picks projections, you, that's right, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. So have at it. Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert. 
Keenan Allen, Clyde Edwards Hilaire. He had a big day in week one. They're all right there for you guys. It's not competing against other people and their crazy algorithms. It's just you against the projections. And it's not just the NFL, it's college football, NBA, MLB, every sport all the time. Each entry can be made under 60 seconds, safe and fast withdrawals, currently available in over 30 states and in Canada. So here's what we want you to do. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports like David and I have. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. Again, if you deposit 100, Prize Picks going to give you 100. If you deposit 50, Prize Picks going to give you 50. It's that simple. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. All right. Our next partner has a product that is literally sitting in my kitchen as we speak right now. I'm talking about AG1 because I hated taking vitamins. I hated taking all the pills. So I decided to give AG1 a try. With one scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. And for me, I go half water, half pineapple juice in the morning with it, and it's an easy way for me, to get, for me to get my day started right. And I can still move around as I need to while it's doing it, or on the rare occasion that I'm running late, I can bring it with me. I can just take it out to my car with me and literally bend my dietary needs to my schedule. Whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, this will work for you. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network. Again, that URL is athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, once again, thanks for making the Locked On Commanders podcast your first listen and your first view each and every day. David, why don't we get started in segment two with a listener voicemail after the Commanders went to 1-0. and Hey, guys, it's your old pal LP in New Jersey. So I'm excited as anything, man. We need to start with a win, and we got to win. So I'm not going to get bogged down in semantics of this and that and the other thing. I'll say one positive thing and one negative thing. And then I'll let you go, man, Jahan Dotson, as advertised, that guy. Two touchdowns as a rookie in your first game. I think we got a lot of good things coming, uh, and I'm very, very excited. One negative thing, and I know we called a great game, but and this is a personal thing. Scott <laughs> Turner, on third and one and third and two, constantly going into a shotgun makes me insane. If you need one yard or two yards, why are you adding five or six yards? It doesn't make any sense to me at all. It makes me really crazy. Uh, I'm really excited about a win, and and hopefully we take it into next week and, and win again. So thanks, guys, for what you do. Talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, LP. Appreciate you, as always, pal. Uh, always good to hear from you. Uh, we will have more voicemail coming up uh, during this particular episode. we got to try and keep some of the reaction time down, David, so we can talk about everything uh, on our list. But let's get right into uh, some of what LP was talking about, You know, creating some of the excitement and the drama. The atmosphere at FedEx Field on Sunday, and I've been going to FedEx Field since 2009, uh, nope. Just about every home game, not every home game, but um, you know, there were some times where I had to work in the studio, but a lot of home games. And there have been great atmospheres, 2012, so on and so forth. Uh, even in 2010, Mike Shanahan's first year with Donovan McNabb, uh, all of that, Robert Griffin. But the atmosphere on Sunday was something that I don't think many of us in the media have seen in a while. Mm -hmm. You and I walked through the concourse, the main concourse, right around 12.30, a half an hour before the game, and we both noted a palpable energy. Um, and that was, again, pregame and about a half an hour or so before the game. And, and again, there was lots of people there. Okay, duh, that's a football game. People are going to go to a football game, especially season one or game one. But I, I did note it. I, both of us noted it to each other, right? There was yeah. something, I don't know, interesting about the atmosphere a half an hour before the game. And I think when we saw the lower bowl, and I know the upper bowl was kind of sparsely, at the, whatever. The lower bowl was mostly full, 98% full, and they were loud, proud, and passionate through the game. Yeah, and I mean, look, I've been going to FedEx Field since uh, this Sunday. 
And in all my trips to FedEx Field, <laughs> I had never seen a crowd that electric. No, wait, but seriously. Wait, 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 wait a second. Are you sure you weren't there on Saturday? <laughs> I was not there Saturday. Okay. Listen, make sure. it was my first trip to FedEx, right? But here's the thing. I had I have covered a team that struggled before, right? Like, right. like sometimes it's hard for people to remember this, but Tom Brady didn't always play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. There was That's a short true. period of time he played for the New England Patriots and did a few things uh, for that franchise. So I've been, I've covered a team. Uh, that was that was that was not very good, and I've covered multiple rosters, versions of rosters that were not very good, and seen Raymond James Stadium just just empty, man, just it, almost like a ghost town out there in the lower bowl, in the upper deck, in the club level. It didn't matter where you were looking; it was just a very very sad sight. And I wasn't expecting, you know, bottom of the barrel Buccaneers attendance numbers, but I was expecting a much lesser crowd than what we saw, and and. Even just parking. I mean, I'm not gonna get all the details, but it was quite an adventure for me to park mm -hmm. the first time at FedEx Field, my first time Welcome approaching to the stadium. Yeah, it was it was awesome. But um, you know, but even just going through the parking lot and watching the tailgaters and and the and the people playing football together and and doing everything else, like I was like, there's more people just in the parking lot than I expected mm -hmm. to see. And then as I'm walking up to the stadium, you know, the gates hadn't opened yet, but the fans are out there and everybody's crowded and the energy was positive. You know what I mean? It wasn't a bunch of people who were like, all right, let's. Let's get this over with and do all that, you know. And Chris, honestly, there was a moment. So during kind of the struggles, right, during the the interceptions and the punts and then the not scoring and the Jacksonville Jaguars coming back, there was a moment for about five seconds where there was a, a portion of the of the crowd that started to boo. And I heard it and they started to boo a little bit. And I was a little bit taken back, to be quite honest with you, because one, it's week one. And I'm like, all right, like I understand all the history and, you know, the recent losses and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But even still, week one, I'm like a little bit surprised to hear the booing. Usually week one, people still let themselves be a little bit delusional. Say, hey, we can make a comeback. We can get this righted. Stuff like that. But then also the way that this team had taken control of the game early on, like the, the feeling wasn't that they could come back and do it. But the booing only lasted for about, like I said, about five seconds or so. And I noticed that it was, went by very quickly. It didn't catch on. It didn't spread. And really, the stadium started to get a little bit more positive. People started to try to amp each other back up, stand up out of the seats, make a little bit of noise, support the team. And I felt that was different than what I probably would have experienced last year, what I would have expected coming into this year. And then this team responds. They come back. They get it put back on track. They make the plays they need to score the touchdowns, get the interception. The defenders in the south corner of the end zone interacting with the crowd, getting them amped up and excited. So it was very good to see the turnout, the energy. And then even during the struggles, there's a moment, there was a sliver where the fan base was like, nah, like we're, we're not supporting this right now. And then he was like, you know what? Let's, let's, let's pump the brakes. Let's get back to supporting. And then they were rewarded with a comeback victory, which I think was a great way to wrap up that game. And honestly, now that you walk away with a win, it's a great learning experience for this roster. I think what also helped, and I'll just make this point real quickly, is they won. They won from come from behind fashion after having a lead, after surviving a really difficult middle second quarter to full third quarter into the fourth quarter. But David, they won an exciting faction. They won yeah. sexy, you know, 49 yard touchdown pass to Terry McLaurin helps. Well, and, and the Jahan Dotson second <laughs> Jahan touchdown. Dotson, I was yep. wrong on the, on our live episode. Uh, that was a much more difficult catch than I yeah, saw from the press tough. box. So uh, I'll raise my left hand because my microphone's in my right hand and say, I was wrong on that. Sorry, Jahan. I owe you one uh, there. That was a difficult, right. difficult catch, but they won sexy and that, along with the win, pumps up everybody just a little bit more. Yep. And again, I would expect, especially if they can go 2-0 and in Detroit, yeah. a much, much even more energetic atmosphere yes. two weeks from now against the Listen, Philadelphia Eagles. All right, I coming up. 2-0 Commanders team to come back to FedEx, bring Jalen Hurts and the Eagles in here. Commanders fans, y'all represented very, very well in week one. I need to see an even bigger representation in week three. When I, you know, I get, I'm going to New Orleans this weekend. I'll be covering the Bucks game in person there in New Orleans because uh, I'd rather go to New Orleans than Detroit, to be quite honest with you. And then I'm coming back here, obviously, for the home game against the Eagles. Definitely looking forward to that after what the uh, the fan base did on Sunday. Bring us back some etouffee or something like that.
I need a hurricane and then some from Pat O'Brien's. All right, coming up, we're going to hear from Derek Forrest, Terry McLaurin, two stars of the game, and a voicemail. We'll try and get it all in somehow, some way we will, right here on the Locked On Commanders podcast. But first, we tell you about our friends at betonline.net. They, of course, are your number one source for all your pro and college football uh, betting needs and sports info. On Sunday night, after the Commanders win, we found out that Bet Online installed the Detroit Lions as one and a half point favorites in week two at Ford Field against the Washington Commanders. So if you're feeling froggy, go put some money down on the road dogs, baby, at Bet Online because everybody's in love with the Lions because they scored 35 points and because they were on hard knocks. Dan Campbell, he's going to bite your kneecaps off if you bet against his team. Either way, Bet against them at Bet Online. Bet Online is your continued source for live betting, esports, and scores. Fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports. Major League Baseball still going on, baby. We've got college football, lots of action. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online, where that game starts. Final segment here of the Locked On Commanders podcast on this Tuesday, Victory Monday recording, but Tuesday episode. Unless you're watching on YouTube when we premiere at 9 p.m. Eastern time uh, Monday night. So either way, regardless of how you're watching or listening, again, we appreciate you for joining us. Chris, we got another voicemail. Let's get to another Commanders fan before we start hearing from some Commanders players. D-Money, WrestleMania, we won. <laughs> it is your boy, Hogskins. It was a good game today, man. I was happy. Um, Vlad Gibson didn't fumble. He looked pretty good, man. I, I was definitely happy to Gibson. Uh, one thing I was tripping out about was that uh, I think it was a screen pass that Carson Wentz, that little interception he threw, man. That was crazy. I've never seen anything like that. For a minute, I thought I thought we was going to get that L, man. Like, they, they pulled it off, man. That uh, that bomb to T-Mac, that was nice, man. Right in stride. Uh, Dotson caught out a nice one, too. Looking forward to the next game. Hopefully, hopefully we can go 2-0. All right, man, you guys take it easy. All right, thanks to our boy Hogskins. We appreciate you. And, David, uh, We because we have a lot to do here, we're just going to kind of move along. Um, a player that I, I would say uh, you caught up with a bunch of players. Uh, I caught up with a bunch of players, different groups, different players, what have you, after Sunday's win. Terry McLaurin, of course, after the 49-yard bomb, uh, caught up with him, and uh, we asked him in the media about how he knew he would essentially be the guy, hot, if you will, on that particular play. I actually got excited seeing him throw that same route in practice over and over again against that coverage, and um, I knew I was going to be alive on that. So, um, you know, they had kind of been playing that soft zone all, all game, and, um, you know, I knew the next drive we got that opportunity, he was going to throw it in. Um, it was just great to run through a ball that was, you know, right in stride like like he did. And you know, it was a changing point in the game. So I think, um, you know, it was great to get our first connection out there. I think it's only going to grow for us. All right. Once again, that's Terry McLaurin after the game. So big there. Uh, and, and of course, that was set up by that 27 yard bomb, uh, not bomb, 27 yard catch and run to Logan Thomas, David, on third and eight. Carson facing a blitz. That drive was so needed, so critical, not only for the score, but they had been dead in the water on offense, including the turnovers and really some just sloppiness, if you will, up until uh, that particular drive. And then on defense, um, Derek Forrest, along with Deron Payne, were the two individual stars of the game. Mm -hmm. Didn't get to talk to Deron. I don't know if you did, but did get to talk to Derek Forrest. Uh, Defo, as they call him, he was an absolute stud, including two back-to-back -back plays near the end of the first half. Uh, you know, it's too many injuries, so I keep him in bounds. I was trying to keep him in bounds, and he turned around, and it was in position for me to make a great play. And, you know, I like the hit. So, a big hit, ball came out, that was energy. So then, you know, we got that rest in, in between, and I'm like, they're going to probably come at me again. Mm -hmm. Just me being first start, first time starting, they're going to come at me again. So, you know, overall coming, got in position to make the play. I just had to make the I had to make the best of my opportunities. Two great plays there, back to back. A five yard loss for Etienne after the hit, and then the right. coverage along the back line of the end zone, David, and then that forced a missed field goal by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, and you love seeing it for Derek Forrest, right? Terry McLaurin, you love seeing that too. Jahan, uh, obviously, you know, your first game as a rookie, you know, wide receiver, first round draft pick, all that stuff. You love seeing all that stuff. But man, Derek Forrest, the, the you know, star of the game for me just because of. The situation he was walking into also caught up with defense backs coach Chris Harris just asked him real quick how he felt about his young safety and he just he couldn't stop uh ran and raving about how how hard he prepared how well he prepared you know learned from the other veterans in the room really took their advice to heart went out there and put it on the field man and he has he helps the commanders uh get a win because not just that hit not just that game ending INT like he was flashing all over the field throughout the game 
you know, even outside the quote unquote uh, bigger moment. So happy for all those guys, obviously, you know, coming through uh, with that roller coaster win. And, and it was just, it was a great way to open the season. You know, unfortunately, or fortunately, there's 16 games left to play. So we'll see how the rest of it unfolds. But hey, man, take the wins when you can and celebrate the celebrations when the celebrations are being celebrated. No doubt about it. And if, for those of you watching, I know I'm not doing something funky with my left arm. I'm just trying to simulate a roller coaster because that's what we're on, baby, in 2022. David, do we have a chance for one more voicemail? Commanders with the win. Uh, in some ways, a beautiful game. some ways, an ugly game. In my opinion, um, I have to eat a little bit of crow. I was not on board with the idea of getting uh, Carson Wentz. Uh, obviously, I grew a little more accustomed to it as we talked about it and as we went over it and talked about possibilities. He, he has some throws and some things that he can do that, that, that Heineke just doesn't have. So, for one, I'll eat my hat on that one. I'm one of those that did have Jahan Dotson as a fantasy player. However, I had just a little bit of doubt, so I was sitting on my bench this week, which was probably going to be, uh, I'll probably lose this week because of that. This is probably the first time in a while that I've actually seen that the defensive line and the backfield were working together a little bit. Now, granted, this was Jacksonville, but this is probably one of the first times in a while to me it seems like there was a little bit of, little bit of uh, scratching each other's back. Mostly good. I uh, can't complain. It's a win. Uh, all right, I'm out. Todd from Utah. Thanks. Oh, we know you, Todd from Utah. Thanks as always, pal. Um, we appreciate all of you guys. All right, David. Uh, that is going to do it for this particular episode of the Locked On Commanders podcast. We thank you for making us your first listen and your first view of the day. Again, special thanks uh, to LP, Hogskins, and Todd Utah for sending in the voicemails. And for you guys, all of you for watching, commenting, listening, however you consume us. We appreciate you. Now make your second listen and view the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson giving you the expert NFL analysis in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. I'll be back with a solo episode. Maybe we'll have a special guest. We'll have to see. And then David with a crossover Thursday edition as we get set for the Detroit Lions. If you want to hop in, it's 301-615-3577 on that voicemail or locked on Washington Commanders at gmail.com. For my partner, David Harrison, who is covering the Commanders for Commander Country at SI.com's Fan Nation. I'm Chris Russell, one half of the Russell and Med Her Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app. Uh, if you're out and about, please be safe. Be kind to one another. Don't you dare drive like a maniac. And thank you for joining us right here on the Locked On Commanders podcast.